Journey, discover, explore, and experience love. Agape Trail, Mile One, God is Love. Explore. One morning, love came into my kitchen while cooking breakfast and wrapped his arms around me. My body melted at the warmth of love's embrace, and I found myself on the floor. While the pan was heating on the burner, my heart was melting and draining through my eyes. Tears poured down my face as I felt this warm blanket cover me, lifting every burden, calming every nerve, and setting me free from the fear that had paralyzed me my whole life. As God spoke to my heart saying, Andrea, I have always been with you. I've been here all along. I heard the sound of many prayers in the air, prayers for me. I'm not sure how long I sat on the floor with love that morning, but it couldn't have been more than a few minutes because the burner on the stove was on and I never saw smoke. What I can tell you is that it felt like days. The depth of the revelation of love unveiled in my heart was so profound, my life has never been the same since that morning. I grew up in church, but I wasn't just a Sunday goer. I was a very active church member from the time I was a young child. I attended Sunday school, went out evangelizing, led the church's prayer group, led worship, attended seminary, and was a young adult leader, among other things. Yet, after the encounter with love, I realized I didn't know God. The one who just embraced me, bringing me to my knees in utter surrender and worship, was not the God I grew up knowing. The one I grew up with wouldn't want anything to do with me. I was angry, bitter, and purposely pushed him away because I wasn't living the kind of life I thought he expected of me. Yet, there he was. He met me where I was and made sure I knew it. He broke through heaven into earth for me, answering prayers that were made on my behalf. What kind of love is this? This was a love I did not know, a God I did not know. The encounter set me on a journey of discovering who God is. I set out exploring, discovering, and experiencing God, the one who is love. That is why throughout this book, I'll refer to God as love. What sets this journey apart is that love is not only my destination, but he is our hiking guide and partner. He isn't just someone waiting for us at the end. He is with us on the way there. It's not about the destination. The beauty is in the journey. The exhilaration is in that moment of discovery. The wonder is in beholding and experiencing the treasure. Every treasure is life-changing and ultimately sets us into the exploration of our next discovery. Like any long journey, there are incredible moments and difficult ones. There are hard seasons and beautiful ones, winter and summer. Discoveries are made in every season, even the difficult ones. I've realized that discoveries made in the hard seasons of life can become the treasures that bring forth the most fruit. I call it a season of pruning, and pruning is vital to having a fruitful tree. It has been over four years since love met me in my kitchen. I've been through a few seasons and have made some discoveries that led me to experiences that changed my life, and I want to share these with you. Jesus came to bring us abundant life, John 10.10. 10 with a peace that makes no logical sense to the human brain, Philippians 4.7, ecstatic joy, 1 Peter 4.8, and love that pushes away fear and its power over us, 1 John 4.18. Abundance, peace, joy, love. These are all things that we have available to us through, in, and with Jesus, no matter the circumstance. Everything around you can be chaotic, your life can be a mess, the world can be falling apart, but these four things found in Jesus can reside in you even still. No matter what is happening around you, you can find abundance, peace, joy, and love within your soul and spirit. Outside influences can't change what's on the inside. How in the world is that possible? You have no idea what I'm going through. It's impossible to have peace in my situation. I can't love them after what they did to me. Abundance? I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent in two days. I don't feel very abundant right now. Joy? The person I loved and trusted the most in the world just betrayed me. Don't ask me to be happy right now. You may likely have questions and thoughts like these. 
I understand, and they are valid. Unfortunately, life isn't always conducive to allowing us to experience all the beautiful things God wants for us. We live on earth where a world system is fallen and where sin and death reign. While Jesus has saved us from this world system, we are still surrounded by it, and it affects our lives way more than we would like. So how do we live the kind of life where we experience the promises of Jesus, even when life feels like hell? We will answer this question throughout this book. Ever since the day God met me in my kitchen, I have been living a life of abundance, peace, joy, and love, even when life was difficult. Over the last four years, I've been able to discover treasures from the heart of God that have allowed me to walk out the promises of Jesus. I want you to have those treasures too, but it requires you to set out on this journey with me. This book is not meant to simply share my discoveries, although I'll be doing that along the way. Its purpose is to guide you through your journey. As I share my explorations, discoveries, and experiences, I hope you go off exploring on your own and discover incredible treasures that cause a life-changing experience. You will likely make discoveries I haven't made, but just as I'm sharing my treasures with you, I hope you will share yours with me. Let's begin with a discovery that is foundational and necessary before we go any further. Without this treasure, every other discovery will lack its beauty and glory. Ready? God doesn't just love. God is love. Who he is, is love. There's nothing about him that's apart from love. He doesn't exist without love because he is love. And love doesn't exist without God. After all, love is God. When he breathed into the nostrils of man, God breathed love into the fabric of every single human being. When God embraced me that morning in the kitchen, it was as if a blanket covered me. The fabric of love. God is love, and when he made man, love also became part of our DNA. When a human loves, it is the expression of God through humanity. God is love. There's no way he cannot love you. It would go against his nature. Everything God does is motivated by love. His discipline, judgments, and wrath are all out of his love. God undeniably and passionately loves you. Discover. 1 John 4, 7-21, through 21, the Passion Translation. Those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another because God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of him. The one who doesn't love has yet to know God, for God is love. The light of God's love shined within us when he sent his matchless son into the world so that we may live through him. This is love. He loved us long before we loved him. It was his love, not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. Delightfully loved ones. If he loved us with such tremendous love, then loving one another should be our way of life. No one has ever gazed upon the fullness of God's splendor. But if we love one another, God makes his permanent home in us, and we make our permanent home in him, and his love is brought to its full expression in us. And he has given us his spirit within us so that we can have the assurance that he lives in us and that we live in him. Moreover, we have seen with our own eyes and can testify to the truth that Father God has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Those who give thanks to Jesus is the Son of God, live in God, and God lives in them. We have come into an intimate experience with God's love, and we trust in the love he has for us. God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God, and God lives through them. By living in God, Love has been brought to its full expression in us so that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment because all that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. Love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. 
Our love for others is our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated to us. Anyone can say, I love God, yet have hatred toward another believer. This makes him a phony, because if you don't love a brother or sister whom you can see, how can you truly love God, whom you can't see? For he has given us this commandment, whoever loves must also demonstrate love to others. Dig deeper. Do you genuinely believe that God loves you, even though you've done, said, and felt some things that aren't good? Share those experiences that have led you to believe or doubt. If you have doubts, I encourage you to meditate on the verses we're exploring today and identify the truths in this passage that come against the lie that God doesn't love you. Did you discover any new treasure about who God is? Experience. Pray with me. Father, I know that you love me, but I desire to believe and accept your love. It's not possible for you to not love me because your very essence is love. Reveal to me the depth and reality of who you are as love. Open my eyes to see your love for me and all humanity. I open my heart to receive your unconditional, unwavering, and passionate love. I want to experience your love in a deeper way than I ever have before. I pray that your love washes over me like a river flowing through in my entire being, washing away all fear scales and veils and replacing it with abundance peace and love amen worship song love is a miracle by maverick city